So, so, hello and labas. Welcome to the year 1314. It is Sunday and the pains have all just woken up. They've been out, you know, taking care of some stuff and they've all just woken up. Gree's currently on cooking duty and uh, everyone else is working on taking care of the animals or themselves. <gasps> okay, and Agla's just gone into labor, so we are about to go over there instead. So I'll see you in Lithuania. Alrighty, so Agla's in labor, and let's go ahead and have this baby. Oh my gosh, I'd forgotten how teeny tiny. Whoa, she is huge. Is it just me, or has she gotten bigger? What the heck? I don't think her tummy's ever been this big, even when she was pregnant with the triplets. My goodness. And the name that we've gone with for this little bean is Oshira. It means dawn, and I thought that was a really sweet name because hopefully we're going to get to, you know, keep this little guy. Oh, uh, Vilkas is family oriented. Yes, you are. Please feed baby. And then we will go ahead and do your roll. Oh, I know it's been a bit of a tough one for you guys, but I think that she likes being a mom. Pretty cute, pretty cute. Okay, let's see, Agla, are you and little baby Oshira going to survive? First one never counts, so we just need to avoid rolling for mom. A one or an 11. <gasps> Oh, no. Okay, we're gonna plead for Agla, of course. Baby has to avoid rolling a 1, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 17, or 20. <sighs> okay, and the baby is fine, um, but mom is not. Okay, oh gosh, this... Oh my gosh, this wasn't supposed to be how it was going to go. Okay. Okay, so the baby is fine. The baby is fine. Go ahead and bounce and give a little kiss. Vilkas, you've never had to, you've never had to do it before, buddy. I'm going to need you to plead like your life depends on it. Can you, my little buddy, just go over there and Agla... I love you so much. Please make it through this, okay? Oh my gosh. Grim. Grim, do not betray us. Do not betray us like you've done before. This is a one in a one in a kind, one in a million type of woman. Please. Please. Grim, where are you? Remember, we're best buddies. Oh my gosh, her father is out here too. Grim, remember when we introduced our child to you? Remember when we introduced our child to you? Oh my gosh, why are you so okay right now? Because of the baby and the fire? Pretend the fire's not there, Vilkas. Please. 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 <gasps> Grim. Grim, you're our best buddy again. Don't sass him about this, Vilkas. He's helping us. <gasps> oh my goodness. Grim, we owe you. What do you want? We'll give you anything. Grim? Oh, we can't talk to him? Oh my goodness. I guess we'll be back with these guys because at the end of the year it's somebody else's birthday. So I guess I'll see you guys later this year. Okay, so 
I see that nobody's needs have been solved. I will deal with all of you in a moment, but you are getting a bath. I'm sorry, but you're very stinky and we are going to go to church today. So I need you to please. Great, are you out here mining? Dude, I admire you, but like, let's not right now, okay? Okay, so we're back here in rainy England, and the reason why it's going to be so rainy here is that in 1314, it was a really, really wet year. It's gone down in the history books as being a super wet year and a time when, you know, there's just like a lot of water going on, a lot. And this has a direct impact. It's one of the main things that leads directly to the start of the Great Famine. So I thought, you know, it'll be nice, nice. It'll be something if we have our world be rainy like it was in that uh, time period. So, yep, here we are. We're in a rainy world. Huxley, oh, your sister's calling Wolfgang. You go for it, Oakley. I want you to have the best life. I want you to have a life that other people dream of, you know? So since it's also spring, that brings us to the start of a new Sims year, which means that we are now ready to roll for our next kingly visit. So we're going to go ahead and do that now to find out when is the king going to be arriving. So what we do is we take a d8 and we roll that. The first one never counts. Thank goodness. Oh, two. Okay. Too. So that means that he will be coming in the second week of spring and we get to choose when that's going to be. Wow, we're so lucky. So when will the king be visiting for this year and taking our food? It has to be during the second week of spring, which is completely during the Great Famine. Um, so... Let's give, since it's going to be Huxley and Esmond's birthday on this day, we'll give that to them. And then starting on Ascension Day on Thursday, we will for sure be fasting because we're going to have no food. Because that's when the king's going to be coming to visit. Yay, 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 yay. All right, so here we are. We're currently at the church for a service. We can see some members of the community. Of course, we're also taking up most of the seats. Dovile is playing with a toy while we're at the service, and the boys seem to be facing the wrong way, but at least everyone's sitting kind of still. Oh, nope. Spoke too soon. We've got one making a run for it. So we're here, and they're going to have attended a service today. Speaking of you, old chum, old pal. Man, he looks so sad. Like, or not. I don't know. How does he look? Oh. Hey, Gree. Thomas, you're making it very difficult to see. Okay, there we go. So, speaking of Thomas, Earl of Lancaster. Speaking of Thomas, Earl of Lancaster, in 1314, the war with Scotland reached a point where if things don't change, the war was going to be lost. And so he was being pressured to lead an army up to Scotland to make sure that the war wasn't lost and all of the things that his... What's happening over here? <gasps> Grand Airmen. Cute. And to make sure that the war wasn't lost after all of the efforts his father had put into winning the war in Scotland. Oh, he's coming over here. Shaking his head at these guys. Okay, interesting, interesting. Saying howdy. So what's interesting is that Edward led an army up to the Battle of Bannockburn, which was an absolute failure, and this caused the barons to turn further against him. Many claim that this failure was Lancaster's fault because Lancaster was legally obliged to bring his forces to support him, but Lancaster basically just didn't show up. And so this is also mentioned as something that is a driving point in the destruction of Lancaster and Edward's relationship. One historian points out that not so many earls came to the war. In fact, it was only a couple of them, so maybe this wasn't as big of a deal as it's made out to be, but it's an interesting side point. Another side point is that this historian that points out that not so many earls came to the war 
also notes that there's a lot of things written indicating that Edward acted as though all he had to do was basically like show up and that would equal a win. And in fact, one chronicle of the time said that he acted really strange on the march up there and quote, did and said things to the prejudice and injury of the saints at the monasteries that he passed. So it's a really strange moment that I don't really know what to make of it, but I thought I'd point that out. So Lancaster theoretically should have been marching up to war and instead he chose not to. Are you chatting with the Earl? You know what, Gree? Good for you trying to improve yourself, but I mean, I'd like for you to have some friends your own age, you know? I'm just gonna watch these guys and see what they get up to, you know? Seems like they're getting up to more or less nothing. And this place is popping. I see you. Briar. The pie thief. I don't think Hugsley would do anything about it. He's too nice. Aw, kissing your wife. And I don't think Sif would do anything about it either. But Gree, I don't think would either. Dang it. Buddy. In a day, you'll be old enough, and then we can go pick a fight with Briar Brewer. Because honestly, she has it coming. She has it coming! I'm gonna need you to get in a fight with her, okay, bud? Oh my gosh, look at his little face. <gasps> so sweet. So these guys are just gonna settle in for the night, take care of some little needs, finish up some creative projects, and tomorrow we will catch back up with them, but we might pop over to London first because it's Harlan's adult age up. Again, nobody has survived this one. You know, he and Sif are both facing the adult age up this year, and so far nobody's made it in our family since we began this challenge. So hopefully, hopefully everything's gonna be just fine. But there's only one way to find out. So I'll see you all tomorrow and we'll check in as well at some point about his birthday. All right, so here he is, Harlan Brewer, the man himself, sitting next to his son, eating breakfast, well, lunch of salad together, eating quickly. And I guess it's about time for us to see what his fate is going to be, and if he's going to survive this role or not. Harlan, I'm really rooting for you. I don't know how everyone else feels, but I'm rooting for you, pal. Okay, so the numbers he cannot roll are 3, 6, 11, 13, and 18. He cannot roll any one of those numbers. The first one never counts. Come on, Harlan. He's going to be the first one. He's going to make it. So Harlan has survived. He has survived into becoming an adult. We'll go ahead and age him up. And then we might just go ahead and head on back to our main family. Because, you know, it's already noon. And um, we love spending time with those guys. But I'm really glad to see that Harlan's going to be just fine. He still wants to become enemies with the Earl of Lancaster. I'm really glad that Aiken the Second isn't going to get left alone for... I don't know. I don't know what would have happened to this kid. Does he have any friends? <laughs> Just his dead sister and dead mom. I guess in Vilkas. Vilkas is pretty far away. So I've gone ahead and given Harlan just a few little egg spots to show that he's getting older. I think he's had, you know, a happy enough life with his son, but it hasn't been perfect. And he's got some wrinkles around the eyes as well as some deep eye bags from all the nights that he spent missing his wife and daughter, wondering what his life could have been like if he hadn't run off. So like I said, I think we'll go ahead and leave these guys here um, to keep living their best London lives. They're doing pretty well financially. They've got 20,000. They already paid their tallage from last decade. And so they're just sort of, you know, getting by and doing well. And we don't really have to worry about them now that Harlan's made it through. 
And um, yeah, we'll be back to check in with them again in 1316 for little Aiken's birthday. Ah, back with the family and it is rainy. So it is sticking with the narrative that we have gone ahead and made. So I don't really know what we're gonna get up to today. I might cut today out just so that it's easier to fit everything else in because we have a lot more birthdays coming up this year. And um, yeah, I'll go through today and if anything exciting happens, of course, I'll record it. But other than that, I think we're just going to let these guys do whatever they want to do. Uh -huh. Maybe work on some okay. skills, maybe improve themselves, you know, whatever seems natural. But other than that, we're just going to let them go about their lives and we'll check in with them tomorrow when it is young Mr. Ayer's birthday. Ooh, Aid Wolf. Agree? So, unless something happens, I will see everyone tomorrow. All right, it is morning on Tuesday. I added in just a few screenshots of kind of what the family got up to yesterday so that you don't, wouldn't feel like you'd missed anything, but it was a pretty chilled out day overall. Today's pretty off to a good start already. We've got these, uh, the ladies of the house are currently working away on getting things sorted. Uh, Gree's currently sweeping. Sif has been working on boiling some eggs uh, because we went ahead and collected, I think it was 76 eggs from one of the coops. So one of the coops is finished. The other one just has a nice 91 eggs left to go. Um, so yeah, we're working on that. Poor kids, they're all losing teeth. Edgar's afraid of the thunderstorm. Dovile's working on pressing honey. Gree is um, sweeping up. Today is our heir's birthday, so I'm gonna let him sleep in for as long as he wants to before we get him up because hopefully everything will be fine, but you just never know in this challenge, do you? you? Just never know. Oh my goodness. She's like having the best time of her life and her brother is like, ah! <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh yes, just 25 eggs left. We're actually making pretty good headway with those. But yep. The kids are going to, uh, you know, get up to the stuff that they always get up to. I guess that something that is interesting about the year 1314 is that in 1314, Edward II banned the sport of football for the first time. Um, and the punishment, if you were to get caught playing it, would be imprisonment. So I can't help but notice that Sif has a soccer ball in her inventory. And uh, I'm going to have to just hope that nobody starts kicking it around because I haven't quite decided what and what are we going to do about if, um, okay, kiddo, you go ahead and sit there. If somebody has to get imprisoned, like I'm not really sure what that'll mean. So just have to wait and see. Something else that happens in 1314 that's really interesting is that Philip IV dies. Um, that's Isabella's father and the King of France. And this is going to lead directly to the beginning of the Hundred Years' War. Although we won't be able to understand exactly why just yet, it is something that's going to contribute pretty heavily. And what's interesting about his death is that he had essentially gone against the Knights Templar. He had tortured a bunch of them and gotten them to confess to things that, you know, weren't good. And so what's interesting is that in 1314, he put their Grand Master to death by burning at the stake. 
and Jacques de Molay, who was the Grandmaster of the Knights Templar, shouted out as he was burning to death that Philip would be dead within the year, and he was. So it's kind of an interesting sort of moment that Philip ends up dying because of a curse, theoretically. I mean, realistically, people just didn't make it through the medieval period that easily. Listen, buddy, if you gotta go to the bathroom, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I can't manage that for you. You've gotta go when you gotta go, you know? <sighs> Everyone's just been crowding around waiting for their opportunity. This is kind of the problem with the bathroom being outside is that he might freak out along the way and then come running back without going to the bathroom, but I'm hoping he's gonna make it. Ah, oh, this time everyone actually went, oh, Edgar, you're too cute. Itis, I'm sure that she would love to read to you. I can see you asking, but I'm afraid that she can't read, so that's not gonna work out for us, buddy. Keep making those eggs, Sif. We need that money. As for, oh, Huxley. As for you, little boy, little heir, I think we're gonna go ahead and do your birthday even though it terrifies me. We're just gonna go ahead and do it, okay? Sif, just a few more eggs, my dude. Okay, clean out spoiled food, and then more eggs. More eggs, more eggs. Also, get out of the way, because we're gonna have a birthday for a little buddy. Okay, make a wish, Aid Wolf. The only wish that's a good one is to wish for a successful age up, my friend. Aw, too cute. While he's aging up, I'll go ahead and roll for what his aspiration will be. Loner, come on! <laughs> okay, so Aidwolf is a horse-loving loner who wants to be fabulously wealthy. This is going to be an interesting heir. And he's got an interesting choice of outfit I can already see. Oh my gosh. Wow, what a looker. So here he is, our heir. He's on the move. He's on the move to go where? I don't know, just to stand over here? Okay, strange. Oh, he's gonna talk to Huxley, I bet. Well, here he is. <gasps> Okay, they've got a difficult family dynamic, and so on that note, oh, he's about to cross stitch. We'll wait for him to get settled. All right, with all of the kiddos crowded around, let us find out if Aidwolf, our heir, our current heir, is going to survive his age up into a teen. Just has to avoid rolling a seven. First one doesn't count. And he's fine. He's totally fine. Of course he is. Now he is our heir, so he automatically marries and gets infinite baby tries to whoever he ends up uh, marrying. And other than that, I'm going to bring up right now that we're actually going to do a harvest before the Great Famine starts. So this year, um, that's kind of stretching the rules, you know, it is. But, um... Uh, I'm going to do it anyways because the famine is coming and we're about to also end up losing a bunch of our food to the Earl. can't believe all of these guys just keep uh, going ahead and working on cross stitch. They love it. And Idis, your birthday is swiftly approaching as well, so go ahead and do whatever is going to make you happy. What are you up to, bud? Why don't you help out by cleaning things up, okay? If the weather was better, I would say that we could take our heir out to go horseback riding, but um, it's pretty bad weather to be on a horse, I feel like. Now tomorrow, Wednesday, is Seamus's toddler birthday in Lithuania, and it's also going to be Sif's adult 
birthday as well. But I guess while we're kind of just waiting around um, and these guys are cooking and doing other things, listen, Sif, I love that you love your kids. That's wonderful. But I, I need you to keep working on these eggs. As for you, little buddy, why don't you go ahead and, um, you know, stack? Then you'll be complete with all of your skills just in time for your birthday in two days. So I guess something that I would have gotten to last year if Briar hadn't stolen our pie and completely thrown me off was that in 1313, the order took raiders over into Lithuania in those areas. And they basically, while they were there, ended up taking 700 prisoners. And uh, they basically went around and just let everything go. They were killing people left, right, and center. They didn't care about age or gender. It was a pretty vicious attack. And in fact, the Teutonic Order and the Prussians who were working with them were doing a really successful job, to be honest. They were really going around and crushing the spirits of the Lithuanian people because they would drop their loot at a certain place and then they would break off into these small groups that would go around in bizarre formations, sometimes going straight, sometimes doing zigzag patterns, sometimes doubling back to where they'd just been. So they were super unpredictable while they were raiding and they were kind of crushing the heart of the enemy while they were doing this. But something that's interesting that happens in 1314, oh, look at our family. <laughs> Our healthy, happy family just in time for the famine. Oh, wonderful. But what's interesting is that in 1314, David of Gardinus, which I didn't look up how to say that, so I might be saying it wrong, appeared in a Christian chronicle for the first time, and he quickly became known as an amazing pagan warrior because his very first exploit was to destroy the supplies left by Henry of Plotsky during a September raid in 1314. So he basically went in, he killed all of the guards who were guarding the food, burned the food, and stole 500 horses which then left Henry of Plotsky when he returned with his men who had just been on a big raiding campaign with a dilemma, which is that he then knew that there was going to be an ambush waiting for him and he knew his men were tired, they didn't have food, and he didn't think that they would be able to overcome the ambush. So he actually, Henry of Plotsky, actually led his men 500 miles on a detour. But what this led to is that they ended up starving along the way. And in the end, quite a lot of the men died, and it almost led to the destruction and decimation of the entire Teutonic Order's army. So it was a pretty big deal, you know? Um, David of Gardinus basically almost single-handedly destroyed an entire army, which is pretty incredible, I think. Who's outside? I'm actually curious now. <gasps> Ernan! What's he doing here? He's a witch. Witch, witch, you're a witch. He is, he's a spellcaster. Oopsies, ducks. Okay. Who's brave? Who's feeling? Dovile, you are not sleeping right now. <laughs> Golly. Sorry, Huxley. Huxley's gonna go ahead and- well, what are you doing, kid? Why did you come out here, you weirdo? Why don't you eat this and then go potty, okay, bud? Huxley is, as we've established before, a really good baker, so he's actually going to um, go ahead and bake some food for us to sell because I'm staring at our ingredients and knowing that we're not going to get to- oh, this is Thistle. Thistle is one of Huxley's siblings. She's out of here. Nobody wants to hang out with this. This weather. Oh, and also for Aidwolf's birthday, we went ahead and got this guy a little loot since he loves music so much. 
If you haven't seen it, I created a mods, activities, and skills video reviewing some activities and skills that I think are pretty fun to play with for medieval gameplay for like decades challenge. I believe that that will have come out yesterday. If you want to, you're welcome to check that out. I'll try and put a card here so that it has a link, but the loot is one of them. Man, this kid loves taking naps. Tovili is our biggest sleeper. Kiddo, why don't you go ahead and have some eggs and then you can go to sleep properly, okay? And it seems like the weather has improved pretty nicely. So we are going to have one of the kids come out and harvest everything. Man, Edwolf is smashing through this skill, but I guess he did get the creatively gifted kiddo, didn't he? So yeah. So yeah, we'll let these guys settle in for the night and then catch back up in the morning. Oh my gosh, Esmond, he struck again. This was a cake for selling, Esmond. This was not a cake for you. You were told to go to bed. Look at your eyes. You're proud of yourself. He's a very pretty kid. Well, you've already done it, so you might as well finish it. You're lucky that you saved your sister's life that one time, Esmond. Otherwise, I don't know. We might have to put you up for adoption. You've just halved the price of that carrot cake, bud. Halved. Are you a glutton or something? No, you're a music lover. I don't get you, kid. I don't get you. All right, it is Wednesday morning, also known as Sif's birthday. My goodness. And she is off to, is there, can we make real food? Like spinach salad. Ooh, baked mushrooms. Let's do that. Sif is scared and I'm hoping it's not a bad omen that today's an accursed day for her, but I guess there's only one way to find out. The laundry is now overflowing again and all of the kids are waking up. So um, yeah. I guess we will let them get started with their day, let them get going, and then we will check in for Sif's birthday. Oopsies. All right, Sif. Sif, you've had a tough road and we're really hoping you're gonna make it. For Sif to be successful with this age up, she needs to avoid rolling a three, six, 11, 13, or 18. So let's see how she's done. She made it, okay. Oof. That's two adults who have successfully survived this year. Congratulations to all of you. We are so happy for you, my young friends. Congrats, Sif. I'm proud of you, happy for you. And Gree, once you've done that stuff that you're so excited to do, we're gonna let you take everyone volunteering. Oh, good grief. Huxley, if you don't mind, this this needs to be taken care of. Oh, Idis, I didn't even see that you'd woken up. Good job taking care of yourself. I am so proud of you. You are so well behaved so good and you my buddy you're just sitting there so i can't help but notice that our clothes have piled up again will you please deal with them for us you please clean this up okay i understand i understand <gasps> itis you're so close yay Gree, have you become friends yes Man, she really likes Thomas Earl of Lancaster. It's very interesting. Let me go ahead and eat that. I feel like she never got a chance to eat. As for you, kiddo, can you please ask your mom for a bath? Oh, you're so good, Sif. Okay. Sif, if you wouldn't mind coming to, uh, knit animal clothing here because we're gonna go ahead and open the live-in store and hope that nobody steals our thing oh i didn't even know we could do a markup maybe we'll do 50 percent markup so i know that we're kind of pushing uh for we're gonna be late for seamus's toddler birthday but since i 
planned poorly in terms of when these were going to go off, um, some of the foodstuffs. I figure we should probably stay until they're sold, or at least some of them, because already we've lost an herb bread. So I'm really looking at the fruit pie and the carrot cake and these lava bunt cakes. And then we'll pop over to Lithuania. We won't finish this episode until we've done that, just to make sure that it gets done. Okay, so in total, we could have made 10,923 from assorted things in our inventories, the harvestables that we got for harvest, and the sales that we've made. So we owe 2,185. So that's that money going out right now. And it's a little bit into the beginning of 1315, but we're going to pop on over to Lithuania to check in on Seamus and roll for his birthday to make sure he's okay. Oh, and, um, Agla is pregnant again. I have no idea what trimester she's in. Second. Wee! Age up! Silly! A silly boy. Oh, a blonde baby. How exciting. So he cannot roll a 4, 8, 12, or a 16. And he's A-OK. -okay. We're having a run of really good luck. Just in time for the famine. So here he is, our little bubs. He's our only blonde baby in this family right now. Oh, look at his older brother and his little sister. Oh, and these guys seem like they're doing pretty good all in all. So I guess we'll go ahead and leave them here. I guess we'll go ahead and leave the year here since we're technically in the next year. So thanks everyone for watching and uh, being part of this journey. And I will see you all in 1315. Bye bye everyone.